Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and I'm answering a question that I received on my Facebook page a couple weeks ago when I asked you guys what you would like to see. There were quite a few people who were wondering about the different types of paper or cardstock that you see me using and why I choose particular types of cardstock over others for whatever I'm doing. So today I thought I would quickly go over those different types of card stocks and I'm going to be showing you on screen some examples from past videos where I've used that particular card stock while I'm talking about it. So basically I, for my crafting, I have a, a few different categories of card stock and what I use each for. So the first one is like card bases and anything that is white that doesn't need a special paper. So I, um, I'm i gonna be showing you guys like three different cuts of this paper that I have on hand at all times. And this is basically Nina Solar White. I use most often this cut, which is, you know, it's just like two of these would make a full sheet, a full letter size sheet. So I cut it in half lengthwise, and then I can make a top folding card. And this is the finished card size of four and a quarter by five and a half. So I basically every single card base I do, or I have done for the last couple years or so, except for a few exceptions, I've done it with this card stock. This is the 110 pound version of the Nina Classic Crest Solar White. Um, I will have links to all of these papers down below in the video description and also in the blog post for this video. So if you want to check out any of these specific card stocks, you can. Um, I basically just bought a bunch of these, a bunch of sheets of these, and then cut them in half. I actually went to a copy center that's near me. They do like Xerox copies and things like that. And they had a big paper cutter there and they just stuck the stack of papers in and a big blade came down and cut it all at once. And it was something like a dollar per cut or something. So it was really inexpensive. And then I walked away with big stacks of this paper pre-cut. And I use it so often that it's really been beneficial to have that pre-cut. Um, I know Jenna from McGuire does that and a bunch of other crafters do that as well. We just find it really convenient. The other cut that I have that I use some, but not quite as often, is half of the cardstock the other direction. So it would be like here and here those were together that would be a full sheet of cardstock and when I make cards with this I have a side fold on the card or you know depending on how you turn it so I, I have some sheets cut to this as well I don't use this orientation as often as I use this one so I don't have as much of this one on hand at any one time um, the, also 110 pound Nina classic crest solar white Okay, so then I also have this pre-cut, and this is the thinner version of the cardstock that I use here. This is, these are for card bases, so I want it to be a little more sturdy so it can hold up to all the different things I put on the front of the card. But when I need just um, white cardstock to stamp on or to color on, or you know, I use Copic markers on this paper as well. This this is my Copic preferred cardstock as well. Um, this is the same Nina. Classic Crest Solar White in the 80 pound version. So it's a little bit a little bit more pliable. I like to use this particular weight for stamping and for coloring in particular because if I'm going to be hand cutting any images out, it's a little bit easier when it's a lighter weight. So instead of having that thicker weight of cardstock and kind of having to kind of fight it with your scissors, I'm sure you guys have felt that. Um, I like to use just this 80 pound version for that. And like I said before, I use this for Copic markers, um, colored pencils, um, anything that doesn't have like a, like water involved with it or yeah, pretty much water because even if it was like a heavy paint or something like that, I would still use a watercolor paper just because, well, we're, we'll get into that in a minute. Okay. So this is the white cardstock that I use. And along those same lines, I also have some pre-cut pieces of Nina Desert Storm. It's actually Nina Environmental Desert Storm. Environmental is the um, type of paper. Desert Storm is the color. And I have those same two pre-cuts. 
This is the 100 pound version of Desert Storm. So I have that pre-cut that's you know half of a letter sheet of paper so that I can create a top folding card. And then I also have the same cardstock cut in the other orientation so I can have a side folding card. The reason why I don't keep the 80 pound version of Nina Desert Storm around too much anymore is because I find that I just really use the 100 pound more than anything. I, it's, it's not so heavy that I wouldn't want to cut it out with scissors, but it's also heavy enough to be card base. So just to simplify things on my end, I only buy this one weight of Nina Desert Storm now. I used to buy both, but now I just buy this one because I realized I was always reaching for this one anyway. So once again, this is Nina Environmental Desert Storm 100 pound. And by the way, these are all, um, the pounds are in cover, not text. Text weight paper is thinner paper and it's meant for, um, well, if you think about it, I always think about it like text, like you're going to put it through your printer or you're writing a letter on it, it's a thinner weight. But if it's cover, it means that it's a little bit thicker. Think of it as like a cover of a book, that book cover is thicker. So that's a way to remember. Um, so this is Nina Classic Crest Solar White and this is Nina Environmental Desert Storm in 100 pound cover. Okay, so those are the smooth card stocks that I really like. And then my other category that I wanted to talk to you about is watercolor. And I did a video all about watercolor paper um, a while back. And since then, I've, you know, we're always changing and the things we do are always uh, growing and and you know, morphing into different things and we discover new things we love. So I'm gonna go over all of the different watercolor papers that I love and when I use them and when I don't, so that you guys will have a little bit of a guide. Okay, so, all right, as far as, let's see, I'm gonna start out with the most, uh, or the, uh, the least expensive. We're gonna start with the least expensive. So this is an example of Strathmore 5x7 cold press. Um, I didn't have a blank sheet of it because I have some on order right now. But um, this is one that I use a ton in my card videos. It's already pre-cut down to a manageable size. Um, I like the 5x7 because then I can tape off all the sides, paint edge to edge, and then I still have a full card front size that I have you know, left to work with. So I really prefer that 5x7. The other rather inexpensive watercolor paper that I use quite a bit is Canson XL watercolor paper. This is the watercolor paper I use in all of my um, easy DIY minimal supplies videos. This is the one that I've been using and that's because it's fairly easy to find. I know that if you're in the United States you can actually find this at Walmart. So it's um, easy to get your hands on it and it's fairly inexpensive and if you think about it you're getting 30 sheets and if you cut that down into quarters that's 120 card fronts. And you know, if you think about it, you can, you can get 120 cards out of this one pad of paper. If you think about it that way, it seems a lot more economical. Okay, so these are the two um, types of watercolor paper that I turn to when I want to do something a little more simple or um, really just I want something <laughs> that's gonna be easy to use. These are both really great cards, uh, watercolor papers. Okay, so then along those lines, I wanted to talk to you about the watercolor paper because this one is also fairly inexpensive. This is the watercolor paper that I use when I'm going to be creating a watercolor envelope. And I use this one in particular, it's also from Canson, because it's 90 pound. Remember what I was talking about the different weights of cardstock, how a lower number in pounds means it's thinner. This one right here, you can see it's 140 pounds. This one is 90. That means it's going to be easier to fold. So it's much easier for an envelope. So I specifically only use this pad on envelopes. It comes with 15 sheets. And I think I've had this pad for a year, even longer, because I only use it for envelopes. Okay, when it comes to um, just watercoloring in general, and you know, if you want a good watercolor paper, and I use this a lot, you guys have seen it. It is Arches Cold Press. I really, really love Arches Cold Press. I find that I use it more and more. It's one of my most favorites. In fact, this one 
if you can see, it's down to just a few sheets left. Um, I really, really love Arches Cold Press. I think of all the watercolor papers that I use, all of the cold press papers that I use that I'm going to be showing you, I turn to Arches, or some people call it Arche Arches. I'm not sure what the actual pronunciation is. Um, I turn to this more often than anything else, especially as I've grown in my watercolor techniques and abilities. If I'm going to be doing um, actual painting, not just a watercolor technique, if I'm doing painting with a brush, I really like to use Arches Cold Press. And that's a really good way to, um, I was trying to figure out how I was gonna differentiate between um, using what, some of these papers and what, when I might use, you know, this Strathmore or this Canton XL. And I think it's because, um, or I would say, I turn to these when I'm going to be doing kind of like technique driven things. Like if I want to like put ink down and then pounce the paper in it, something like that. Um, something where I might not be doing layer upon layer upon layer of color because um, while these are watercolor paper and I would turn to these for any, any type of wet medium, um, I don't think that they can handle quite as much water as these other watercolor papers can. So that's when I would kind of um, go to a different watercolor paper. Okay, so um, I really love this Arches Cold Press. I love it for painting. But if I want something that is more smooth for, um, I'm going to be doing some stamping on it or do some no line coloring, I will do the hot pressed version of, of Arches. And this paper is very, very smooth. I know you won't be able to see it on camera, but it's very, very smooth. It, I really prefer to do no line coloring on a smooth hot pressed paper because it, you get a better stamped impression and so you can see those very faint lines a little bit more easily. And I've used this hot press paper for multiple projects over the years and I really come back to it time and time again. Along with Arches Cold Press, I do find myself using Canson Montval quite a bit. Um, my notebooks that I do a lot of my lettering projects in have Canson Montval paper in them. So I use those quite a bit also. Okay, if I'm going to be doing something that is very, let's see, <laughs> how do I want to put this? Um, I'm going to be doing some fancy <laughs> watercoloring. I don't, I, that's a weird way to describe it. Um, if I'm going to be doing something a little bit more artistic, I guess that would be a good way to put it, something a little bit more artistic, or if I really just feel like I want a more toothy paper, meaning that there's a little bit more texture to it. I've been turning to Saunders Waterford. This is a paper that definitely has more of a cream color to it. Like here, let me show you next to my Nina Solar White. I don't know if you guys can see that difference there. There you go, you can see the difference. So it's much more cream. It's not bright white. So some people really don't like that. They don't like that it's not bright white. Um, I find that once I've been painting and whatever, unless it's up to something up next to something that's white, I don't even notice that it's cream. So I don't really mind it. I love the texture more than I dislike the color. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. So this is, um, Saunders Waterford and this is absolutely beautiful paper. It handles so many layers of color. It's, I mean, it's just phenomenal. If you ever want to see like, uh, or test out the difference between a really high quality paper versus something that might not be as high quality, try this out. You will, you will feel a difference. You will sense a difference. Okay. And I did want to mention one more watercolor paper. Okay. So this is the Fabriano, um, Artistico Extra White. And I really love this one because it has that same texture that the Saunders has. It has this kind of same really toothy texture, but it's more bright white. So let's compare. You can kind of see it's a little bit closer to the Nina Solar Whites. I wouldn't say it's as bright white as the Nina Solar White, but it's very close. So let's compare the Saunders as well. There you go. Now you can see the difference. This is the Fabriano uh, Bright White, or what was it called? extra white. This is the Saunders and this is Nina Solar White. So you can kind of see the difference in color. So I, um, I haven't used this paper as often, um, probably because I just, I, you know, I'm not sure why. 
I really should use it more. <laughs> okay, and then last but not least, I really love Strathmore Bristol Smooth. This paper I generally save for only watercolor markers. Um, that could be your Zig Clean Color markers, it could be the Aka CSI markers, um, it could be your Tombow markers, anything that is a marker, even distress markers work well on this. Anything that is a watercolor marker works like a dream on br um, Bristol paper. In fact, I find myself using Bristol paper for a lot of different things. Um, I've noticed that ink blending works amazing on Bristol. Um, I think what it is is this paper has a particular coating on top that prevents um, the different colors of ink or you know your your markers or whatever it prevents it from drying as quickly as some other papers do um, It just holds that color on the surface a little bit longer So you're able to kind of blend out and get that color moving. That's why it works so well with watercolor markers and why I think it works really well with ink blending in particular because um, like in the past I have you know, I've got my round blending tool, you know, I'm blending on my color and I kind of accidentally kind of stamp it and you can kind of see the circle foam from the blending and with Bristol I if I work quickly I can go right back over and it blends all that color out it's really amazing so um, I've been finding myself using Bristol paper for even more and more things these days okay so you might be asking um, I'm a beginner I don't have the time to go track all these down. I don't have the money to pay for all of them. Um, I have been collecting watercolor paper for years, so I've got a pretty good um, head start. So I've got a lot here, but you don't need everything. If I was a crafter just starting out, I would probably invest in two different types of watercolor paper. And it would be these two right here. I would do Canson XL, because you're gonna get a lot for your money. And get, make sure you get the watercolor version, not the mixed media, although the mixed media is very good as well, but I prefer the watercolor. And then also Strathmore Bristol. These are the two papers I would really recommend, along with the Nina Solar White. And if you can only get one version, like you don't wanna get both weights, I would really recommend the 110 pound version because it can be both for coloring and you know stamping, things like that, and also your card bases. So I would recommend these three items. These are my essentials. Bristol Smooth from Strathmore, Nina Classic Crest Solar White in 110 pound cover, and Canson XL watercolor paper. Hope that answered some of your questions today. I wanted to be really, really clear. Um, if you have any other questions or you're wondering why would I ever use that paper over that, or things like, you know, you're wondering why I'm using what, go ahead and leave me a question in the comments area and I will be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching today and I will catch you guys in the next video.